scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever... Do you know for many years, I, I really to. didn't understand Thank how you. faith worked. Until one time I, I took out, I studied almost 11 people, those who represented men of faith. From Bishop Oyedeko to Kenneth Copeland and his wife to Dr. Frederick Casey Price to all of the men hallmarks of faith ew kenyon i sat down with these people and i started seeing it i said so this is where we're missing it we recite scriptures and believe that the recitation is where the power is released no sir are we together am i discrediting the reading of the word of god of course not of course not you can see how old this Bible is. It was not like that. Something made it so. It's called diligence. Diligence until the Bible, you, you see it. I don't know how many times I've laminated this Bible again and again. I've read it to a point that the pages, I can close my eyes. You say, Matthew, okay, I'm in Isaiah. I wanted to try, you know, I can literally open any page. Everywhere is marked up and down. So I believe it. But I found out that many of us keep accumulating this. And then we wonder why things are not working for us. The word of God is the spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. The spirit and the life of God. Whether released by the reading of these letters or communicated through the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes. Now let's discuss faith. We're back to faith. Romans 10, 19. Romans 10, 17. Is God helping us tonight? I'm working this thing with us because I want us to understand faith. We're going to pray. Romans 10, 19. Read it, please. 10, 17. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Now, the word hearing. Let me correct two things. The word hearing, the first hearing, is a very broad word. It does not just mean faith comes by using your ears. Are we together? The word hearing is a very broad word. And there are many synonyms you can add to it. Number one is perception. 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 Faith comes by perceiving. Not just hearing with the ear alone like speaking to you physically. Faith comes by perception because when you read your Bible, you don't hear anything. Correct? You don't hear what you read like this. You can hear through your ears. And remember, even about hearing, the Bible says, he that has an ear. Meaning not everybody has this kind of ear. Are we together? So, the first hearing there means perception. Any platform that can create perception. It's not just limited to hearing. And then the second hearing there means understanding or comprehension. I want you to correct that. Not necessarily in your Bible. I'm not saying it's wrong. So faith comes by perceiving and understanding and that by the word of God. That's how faith comes. When you just read it and it says hearing and hearing. There is a dimension of application. It means listening again and again. And that can help. But the accurate picture is perception and understanding. Everybody say perception. Say understanding. The second hearing there is understanding. Understandest what thou readest. 
on that was where the problem was the utopian enoch he was not reading he was reading but understandest what thou readest perception so when i'm studying the word of god the bible now and i'm reading it the moment perception can come out of it the word of god has come into my spirit i don't have to hear now when i'm listening to bible on tape or hearing a preacher teach like this and the word of god comes it is still hearing so when we say hearing i don't just mean your ears your ears your eyes your dreams your visions any platform that can create perception can impart faith mm. listen listen there are people who have had dreams and got up from those dreams are we together and took certain actions those dreams brought solid conviction to their lives i shared with you about the encounter that i had with jesus christ now that encounter is not written in the bible that joshua Seman will have an encounter but in that encounter i told you jesus did not speak to me he never opened his mouth to speak yet he spoke so many things i left that encounter full of faith and stephen full of faith where did he read anything that we see faith there Do not limit your Bible study to just hearing and reading. Any platform that creates the perception of the word can release faith. So the first is perception. The most common platform of perception is hearing your ears because you hear sounds, sounds. So as I'm speaking to you now, if you cover your ears, it's difficult for you to read my lips. Do you know why I'm speaking this to you? How do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith how do the blind deaf and dumb receive faith if someone is blind if someone is deaf if someone is dumb are you saying faith cannot come to him are we together you see people go to crusade grounds completely deaf meaning as a man of god is preaching other people are jumping they themselves are not even following yet at the end they are healed and we are going to be finding out later that their faith healed them so how did it come question two a dead man who cannot breathe cannot talk cannot do anything how does he come back to life what is the principle of resurrection and then how did the bones of elijah not breathing still transfer the anointing to somebody everybody say the word of god that thing you call the bones of elijah was the word of god any platform that can release the life of god thank you jesus Say after me the word of god is not limited to my hearing thank you the word of god is not limited to my hearing alone the word of god can come into my spirit through any mechanism that can create perception and understanding are you getting what i'm saying meaning the word of god can come to you through a christian music now you are listening to a song play something play what you are playing watch this listen if this guy is anointed hallelujah okay that's all right that's all right thank you look at what this guy is playing play it are you hearing any words english is there hebrew is there your language i want to follow me carefully are we together now but you see the anointing that is released from this i can put the word of god on this sound now and you will see miracles happening are you getting it now <laughs> i can put it by saying then this now the sound that leaves this keyboard does not become an ordinary sound 
it becomes the word of God. Why? A platform that can release the life of God. The power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You will share it. And somebody now will come under the anointing. And you are wondering the operation of the word of God. This is ordinary keyboard. That's how you can be listening to worship in your room. And faith is rising. You are not exactly reading any scripture per se. Yet faith is rising. Because through it the word of God is coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God. The word of God is at work in me. The presence of the Holy Spirit in my life is a sign that I was born of the word. If you are not born of the word, he cannot come. Because he comes in response to the word. So I am born of the word of God. New life is in me. So the Holy Spirit is comfortable to live in me. Are we together? And every time that spirit and life is in me, he can release what is being said. Now I can speak it to happen. But I don't have to speak it alone to happen. I just need to create a platform for it to happen. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you believe this, you will know why we pray for the sick. Not necessarily having to say, be healed. You just touch them. And they're saying, sir, you see some, somebody who tried to say, here, this is where the pain is. And you are touching his head. How does touching the head heal pain at the back? It's the word of God. You are only placing the word of God on them. So you have become an expression of the word. The word became flesh. That's what you have now become. So you are not only reading scripture. You are the word becoming flesh. The word becoming flesh. When you play keyboard, you transfer the word of God to it. This is what is called the ministration of life. The ministration of life. You are transferring life. You are transferring life to that word. Are, are we together now? So when you put the word of God upon this now, deliverance begins to happen. Healings begin to happen. A sinner can sit down. That's why people come for concerts. And at the end of it, you make an altar call and they come out. You didn't teach John 3.16, but the word of God convicted them because it came from the music. I want you to understand faith. I really want you to understand faith. This may look complicated, but as we continue, you will see how it ties up. It will make your life powerful. I don't move around hoping that demons will respond to my quoting of scripture. I know a lot of scripture to the glory of God, but I am a life-giving spirit. I am a life-giving spirit. My body has become a communicator of the word of God. The spirit and the life of God. So if I shake you, for instance, shake me, Femi. If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. Are you seeing that? If I shake you, I release the life and the power of God. You may be sick, I may not know. But as soon as I leave you, you find out I've been healed. Now, I did not ask you whether you are sick. The word of God saw a need. And because I have become the word of God, it feels it immediately. Are we together? Say I'm a manifestation of the word of God. Please, I want you to say it. I am a manifestation of the word of God. Say this, my goal for studying scripture, my goal for studying scripture is not just to be learned but to be an expression of the word of God my goal for studying scripture is not just to have head knowledge it's not just to be learned but to be a walking Bible so when men look at your life they can read a scripture immediately through your life living epistles we fool ourselves in the body of Christ that because we have finished the Bible cover to cover and by God's grace I've done this many times so we say I've read the Bible cover to cover if I'm a man of God as I'm speaking the Bible says blah, blah, blah. And, and once they are talking these spirits are saying my God these guys don't even know what the word of God is we fool ourselves and at the end of it nothing happens are we together and then somebody comes with a saxophone or a guitar and starts playing Anywhere you see the manifestation of the power of God, the word of God must have preceded it. Because the Holy Spirit is not authorized 
to manifest when the word of God has not gone ahead so when you see the word of God moving when you see the Holy Spirit moving he's confirming the word confirming the word whether spoken or revealed the manifestation of the word of God the manifestation of the word of God I tell you as I as I speak this thing you see sometimes because we are talking about the word of God and we are dividing it accurately to open up these things the Spirit of God let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit the moment you begin to communicate the Word of God very accurately it's like his body is itching him he wants to move he wants to confirm it I'm telling you how to confirm the word it's not Holy Spirit move move that's not it let the Word of God be communicated accurately and it's like it's like he cannot I'm not talking of just shaking under the anointing I'm talking of signs and wonders and miracles you place the word of God upon everything the word of God is on the air the word of God is on your chair everything that can communicate the word of God that's what makes the anointing when the word of God saturates a place the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes the Holy Spirit follows everywhere the word goes if the word goes to your kidney he's following it there if the word goes to your academics is following it there if the word goes to your business you don't get the holy spirit to move outside the word of god is witchcraft so send the word of god and the holy spirit follows the word are we together yeah you send the word of god and the spirit moves in that direction so if i declare that i prophesy to your finances if the Holy Spirit does not back that, then it was not the word of God. Even if I quote scripture, are we together? So the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that the word of God has been released in a place. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is proof that his word has been released we pride ourselves with theological knowledge we pride ourselves with knowledge of scriptures john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world but it's not the word of god so the holy spirit cannot back it please hear what i'm teaching you the holy spirit only comes to the scene when the word of god is released whether through speaking or through any platform including your body being a manifestation so when you want to see the energy of the spirit released then be sure that what you are speaking or doing is the word of God are you getting what I'm saying now mm. if it's not the word of God you are not going to get the Holy Spirit here please hear me the degree to which we have seen the miraculous is the extent to which the word of God has come out so you can speak 100 words only 20 of them are the word of God the Holy Spirit backs only 20% of your communication are you getting what I'm saying this is the difference between what we call anointed people they may not have all the verses but their bodies have become greater platforms to release the Word of God so the Holy Spirit in answer to the word confirms them are we together I'm a carrier of the word of God not just by cramming scriptures I have read it but the word of God flows through me like water the spirit and the life of God I understand the principles as I walk in the consciousness of that principle and with the understanding every time I utter my word or respond in any direction as the Holy Spirit would direct that's what we call faith I will tell you what faith is now faith is your response to and from the Word of God not just scriptures your response to the Word of God so you have to make it be sure that what you are responding to is not just scripture but the Word of God and it is called faith and that faith will bring performance more on that next week I'm not talking so much about I need you to understand the Word of God so that when we begin to teach on the dynamics the operation of faith you will know why certain things are not happening in our lives our idea of faith largely has been correct assimilation of scripture correct recitation of the same and then expectation in hope that something will happen it will never work that way are we together 
John 3 16 for this and that and that and that happened for we know the grace of our Lord that though he was poor yet he became rich so that we through his poverty might and we wrap it and we say Lord this is your word respond and say no it is true that I spoke that through the servants but you are only speaking scripture theologically listen let me tell you if the word of God was just scripture then the scribes should be have been the greatest carriers of the word they knew the entire Pentateuch of heart and Jesus looked at them and said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for a thing in them you will find life and you will not come to me listen if Jesus appears here and somebody is writing a book the Bible says scripture testified of him is that true scripture listen if you are writing a book about me and I show up who is a more authentic medium are you getting what I'm saying now so the scribes had head knowledge that prophesied about Jesus when Jesus came they said no Jesus we don't want you but we want the scrolls and he said you are hypocrites you read the scrolls they talk about me now you're reading I am here as the word become flesh you are rejecting me yet you are doing Bible study and Jesus said you are hypocrites are we together but a woman just ran and said thou I mean blind but if I may but touch the hem of who the word of God she perceived she didn't read anywhere but she saw men looking and she said i have heard and something has happened in my spirit i perceive and i understand that this man has power to heal there is nowhere in scripture where she read that you should take a step of faith she created an action based on her perception god honored that action and she was healed i'll teach you that next week don't take action until you perceive and understand the word you will be wasting your time so we take many steps do you know people can come and stand here with their tight frowning no perception no discernment no understanding all these men of God am I sure a Jimmy's tie I'm looking at this tie I hope it's not my money that is going to buy another tie and you are there grumbling and arguing and you drop that and the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin now men of God will not tell you that because they need the money so they say no problem unbelief or not that's your business just drop it let's use it but I'm telling you the sincere truth it must be by faith so here's what the Bible says Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 give it to us please goodness Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 I want us to read it now you will understand all that I've taught you there is a protocol to faith ready want to read <laughs> but without faith it is impossible to please him full stop whoever wants to be a man of faith what is the first step it says for he that comes to God must believe not his word leave the issue of manifestation you must believe that he exists it your perception must on you must understand the person you are dealing with the integrity of his person and his ability to provide for you number one then number two that he's a rewarder that he's a rewarder there are two things God wants to be known for to release faith one that he exists his existence means a lot because if he exists then he's mighty if he exists then he can hear my God's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the inside roaring like a lion there's a song like that have you read have you listened to that song do you believe God is alive I know you will say yes your life does not show it are we together because if you believe it will compel you to take action look at me listen do you believe there is water on this table do you believe do you believe now you can come and carry it do you believe there is water on this table yes you will not come and carry it because you consider it to be a waste of time so do you believe there is God yes so you can relate to him this is why people do not pray they don't believe God is alive let me tell you the truth 
the revelation behind the life of prayer is not religious struggles it's not an attempt to compete with people i pray for eight hours you pray for six hours all that is junk prayer is predicated upon an understanding that unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come after the service people are going to be waiting here queuing right to the back because you believe i'm not going what if i just i use style and just run out if i do that for three weeks you will stop standing here because it's a sign that you doubt my ability the first doubt of believers is not even in the power of god to produce that result it's even his existence i know you think this thing i'm telling you is powerful the word of god is guiding us here do you believe god exists it's a very big deal i've given my life to him no problem do you believe he exists he's alive he's alive sing it he's alive He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Amen. Do you know why every time you visit a herbalist, you must live with a charm? You don't visit whether that charm is a goat or is something you must live with. We call them tokens tokens are representations of the existence of something are we together so you go to him i must marry that man put him in a bottle for me and then they carry his picture throw it in a bottle and lock it correct and give you say hide it somewhere for as long let me tell you the devil does not need that bottle he needs your faith and since your faith must be tied on something he gave you a bottle let me tell you why it still works even if you are born again you are born again because although you are born again you truly still you have tasted of the power of that charm something in you still tells you it's working so it continues working the day a higher revelation and a higher anointing contents it stops working a man of God one time was hungry and was passing and he saw a chicken that they had slaughtered for sacrifice he carried the chicken and roasted it and ate do you know why he never believed that that thing can do anything to him he said they shall take up poison who the believers believers in God not in miracles you believe in miracles but do you believe in God we are talking about knowing that God exists you know Joshua Selman exists, but do you believe he exists? Let me tell you something. You are a hypocrite if you claim to believe what is written here and don't believe the one who wrote it. Are we together? Oh, I believe all things are mine. Do you believe the God who said it? Lord, I don't believe in you, but I believe in what you said. Does that make sense? You don't believe in me, but you believe in what I said. No me and what i have said are one my word is my bond my word represents me when i'm not there you can take my word to represent me if i listen sam if you are dedicating an album and i stand before koinonia listen to me and i say joshua selman on behalf of myself i give you one million naira what is that that's my word now during if you go somewhere and you are doing your calculations you will calculate and say one million naira is coming from apostle have i given you the one million but you know me you believe in me it's up to you now to believe i can deliver it let me tell you what you do you will first size me and look at me can apostle really bring out one million naira are we together so when you ascertain that i'm able to do it number two am i willing when you ascertain that you say i believe it so when god says i will bless you your own belief sizes him and says no god you are great but this triplets you are talking about don't don't joke with us 
So the cure is not just action. The action part is hard. We are coming to that. But if you act upon something you don't believe, it's a waste. If you believe in something and don't act, it's also a waste. Are you seeing how we are cleaning it up? But we are starting tonight with the understanding of God, His word, His integrity. Say, I believe in God. Shout it, I believe in God. I believe he is alive. I believe he exists. That's why I love the Apostles' Creed. The Anglicans recite it all the time. Right? I love it so much because it's an encapsulation. It's called, it's, it's like a statement of faith. Sometimes you need to recite what you really believe. I believe my business can rise. I believe my life can do this. I believe my wife can get pregnant. That's wonderful. But do you believe in God? There is no guarantee in scripture that if you believe those things, they will happen. He that believeth on me. John 12, 14. Please give it to us. We'll find somewhere and pray now. John 12, 14. John 12, 14. The son of the living God himself speaking. John 12, 14. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. Thank you. Read it, please, everyone. One, two, read. Stop. It is important who you believe. Not just that you believe. Who you believe. Jesus never said if you believe on things, you believe that things are, will happen, they will happen. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on what? On me. I want your faith to be directed to me, not my works. Not my works. I believe all things are possible. But the reason why I believe all things are possible is because of him that can make them possible. The end of your faith should be tied to a person and his integrity, not the things he can do. Restful confidence. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And what? greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my father do you believe in him do you believe he exists sister listen to me you it's impossible to believe that fibroid will leave you until you believe in who the healer is are you getting what I'm saying man of God I believe my ministry will be great you are joking you are just playing games but I know whom I have believed. And so I am persuaded in his ability that he is able. The first thing is to believe the person. Then I am persuaded. We leave the person and we believe in the ability and the things that will happen. And we never get results. He said, I see this happen all the time. Innocent people not taking out time do you know this is why intimacy is important with god intimacy does not help you believe things intimacy gives you an encounter an encounter furnishes the reality of god in you so that whatever he says is as good as him so you can believe jesus son of god i believe in you i believe Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Sing one more time from your heart. Yeah. When I lock up myself, I carry my Bible. I set an atmosphere that brings an intense presence of God. And when I lie down and open my Bible, number one, I am not reading for preaching. MOG, I'm not reading for preaching. I'm not reading for recitation. John chapter 1, verse 5. In this and that and that. And, and we no, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Jesus said, If you believe in me, and I sit down there. Holy Ghost, help me believe this truth. Jesus said, his presence is there. 
Jesus said and in my mind I'm looking at people gathered for miracle service they don't know me maybe they are discussing among themselves where is the man and the man is there walking on his faith Lord I know you are able I don't know what I'm going to see here but I believe in you there is no assurance anywhere physically but I believe in you and when I step and come right here and sit down the moment the worship team finishes do you know what I tell the Holy Spirit every time I say let's go it's time to go and do this as I climb this stage I'm an ordinary man but not alone he's standing by my side and so I can speak and make every audacious statement. And because of what is coming, listen, let me tell you, I believe in Jesus. I really believe in him. When he tells me something, I don't doubt. You will always doubt God till you encounter him. It's not the issue of I'm trying. Now, let me tell you, watch this. The body of Christ has fabricated a formula that if not careful, it will be our carnal attempt to recite and to 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 um, replace encounters is the concept a false concept of recitation of scriptures listen what we call confession comes from the word homologio meaning speak that which has been said i believe that there is a step to that but let me tell you what many people do we think that we just get up and start speaking I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I won't hear anything. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And you said, I said it hundred times. Listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to correct us because we will soon get frustrated with all those things. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to my mind. No, listen, your mind was designed to submit. Your mind is not that rebellious. It was designed to submit. You have not created the condition for it to submit. The Bible says, casting down every yetzah, every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Your mind can submit. The mistake that we make is that we don't take our time to meditate. Lord, this shall not happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. But it's happening. It can't happen. In the name of Jesus, it can't happen. It can't happen. Me, God forbid, I must carry my child. I'm carrying my miracle baby. Now, that is good. I don't have a problem with that confession. But what is the revelation behind it? What is the revelation that sponsors that thing? What you are speaking is not the word of God. What you are speaking is emotion. What you are speaking is fear. I can guarantee you most of what we do is a reaction to fear. It's just a spiritual reaction to fear or a spiritualized reaction to fear. Because, listen, if you are speaking right now and they tell you your registration date is closing now for whatever, maybe a job, you need 100,000. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call forth helpers. They are coming. Hey, they are coming. Oh, oh God, they are coming. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Let me show you that it's not just faith, it's fear. They were praying for the apostles to be released from prison in the book of Acts. They were praying and asking that God will send angels. God now sent the angels. Peter came out and they opened the door, saw Peter shot him back and kept praying that's what many of us do are we together no i can't find my wallet i'm a tighter what is this i'm a tighter i dropped my tight in koinonia oh god i'm a i'm a tighter at least it's better than nothing but i'm teaching you restful confidence say restful confidence if you are to be honest you will know his fear I notice the loudest prayer in Koinonia is against the spirit of death and the calling of destiny helpers. I have noticed it personally that every time I say everybody stand up and you know sometimes you can lead it seriously. Be serious. I mean when we say go is like an arrow. All kinds of. Where are your destiny helpers? Ah, where are they? Praise the Lord. Can you get to a point where when you speak, you speak based on conviction? 
when you say i shall not die you are not helping yourself believe an encounter has furnished a reality in your life and it's on the strength of that reality you say i shall not die how many of you prayed to sit down on your chair how many how many of you prayed to sit down okay you need okay praise the lord are you hearing what i'm saying how many of you when you came through perception and understanding you knew that there are laws that were created by God to keep this chair. Who among you is sitting down now and say, Oh Lord, I really believe you. Ah, no, this chair, you can't disgrace me now. Now, does that mean you are not a believer for keeping quiet? That's how restful your life should be. You can sit down inside fire and you only talk when necessary. Because there is something you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please, I, I want you to believe what I'm teaching you. Otherwise, this series is a waste. I'm taking out time to pound on this because I want you to believe God. You step in and somebody looks at you and says, I'm your grandmother. Go and ask about the people I have killed. I vow that you will not see December this year. It's a vow. I vow that you will not see December this year. You now go back. Lord, is this how I'm going to go? What did I do? Who did I offend? Let me tell you what most believers will say. God forbid. Then later they will sleep and say, Kai. Kai. Now let me tell you. That woman herself is even afraid of you. She's but because she gave an attitude and said, I dare you. She left you with an attitude. You too, you claim to have the attitude. But there was no restful confidence after a while you say apostle um i don't know I don't mind i don't be it's not me but i'm just telling you so that you will pray for me it's still fear it's still fear the same way an intelligent student writes an exam he knows what he wrote and they'll just look and say do you know only four people passed the student may just feel an inkling of fear but the student knows that even if it's one student that passed i am the one now he's not boasting out of nothing he knows what he read he understood it he cross-checked the question after the exam and he was absolutely satisfied it's called restful confidence the other person who does not really know what he did is now hoping that's why when he sees ah, finally have you seen the best student Lord, I'm grateful. I give you all the praise. But I expected it. This is how your life must be. That you know God. Sister, you are 34. You are not going to marry. And all of a sudden, you start going and say, Tor, mountain to mountain, valley to valley, everywhere. You start running all around. And you just fidget. There are many of us, the moment somebody speaks to you, someone holds your hand and says, For sinner, I had a vision. In that vision, I saw cats eating you up. For sinner does not sleep for one week. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I will tell you what the problem is. The problem is not the vision. The problem is not whether it's true or false. The problem is you. If I look at you now and say, For sinner, you are a man. Will you pray about it? I will tell you why. It's not just because God told you you are a man. There are too many things that have happened in your life to convince you beyond imagination. You don't just believe you are a woman. You don't just trust you are a woman. You know you are a woman. Notice the progression. I'm believing God. I trust God. I know my God. I know him. I know him. God, it doesn't look like him. I know him. When can you say you know him? That's what Moses knew. He knew his ways. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him because I know him. I know him. I'm trusting God to get to a point in my life 
where I don't just jack up my faith trying to believe God 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 oh Lord I believe in you oh Lord I... no 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 at that point you will move mountains you will join these elders brothers and sisters mountains will stand before you people will even pity you their eyes because they think you are dead at the end of it they will not see the mountain again and they'll see you shaking yourself that's how great people live in this life this ministry you have seen is here by faith by faith by faith by faith I've come to a point where I'm not trying to believe God I really trust him faith is based on the speaking of God trust is based on your experience with God you have had an experience with God there is a track record of his credibility so you can trust yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies we need to begin to walk by faith there are too many things in our lives that attempt to challenge our trust in God but you must get to a point where you say from today I walk by faith and the first encounter is to make the Word of God real in your life look at me the greatest investment you can make in your life is not having an education the greatest investment you can make in your life is not just having good friends the greatest investment you can make in your life is to make your life saturated with the Word of God where you take the Word of God as a project you have given yourself a basis for true faith because there are mountains to cross I like that Don Muen song though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the Lord holy Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen, Koinonia, I speak to you. You are not the first to go through challenges. There are men on earth who have crossed this river. They have crossed the river of barrenness. They turn barrenness to triplets. Are we together? There are men who turn being a pauper, not affording 10 naira to giving billions to nations. There are men of God who turn two members to nations. You are not the first. There are those who overrode the mockery of men. It's time for you to leave the level you are in. This life of pity. Oh God, won't you show up for me? No, sir. He will show up when you are ready. Though we are few, you are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Listen, so God puts his word upon your life. Femi, you will be great. He will never do any other thing until you do something with the word. You can sit there forever and die a failure. It does not mean he lied. The word of God does not act on itself. By the time you look at your life, my father is not doing well. My mother is not doing well. I came from a village. Please listen. I am one of 17 children. I am even the second to the last born. I am 35 years old. I've not done anything meaningful. You look at all of this and God says, if you believe me,
God never gave men instructions until he revealed himself to them. The first assignment was to reveal himself to Abraham, revealed himself to Moses. Then he now sent them. They, every time they wanted to disobey, they remembered him. They remembered him. The same way somebody wants to tell you, look, there's one, there's somebody that I saw in WhatsApp. I spoke with him and he said he's looking for a wife. And the way you have been desperately looking for a husband or a wife, I think I can do a range for you. And he said, no problem. God works in many ways. I believe, but that is not faith. It's unbelief. Are we together? Listen, make up your mind today that you will never take any action in unbelief until you stay and believe God. This is why people who rush through things in life suffer. They rush to start business. They rush to marry. They rush to enter a relationship. They rush to do this. Do you know why? When challenges push you, you will not just look at what you are looking at. You have to look at God. You have to go back and say, Lord, I know you all. You spoke. You said koinonia will rise. You said you will give us a voice. I believe you. Many graduates are holding their certificates, roaming around the streets in Nigeria, angry. The same people can bring notes for you when they were in 200 level. They said, God told me I will be great. Fast forward many years. They are now holding. They were never believing in God. They were believing in that certificate. They were just hoping that God was the certificate. Now that they've held the certificate, they are moving around and you are asking them, where were your visions? Where were your dreams? You said God gave you courage. God told you you will never fail. Brothers and sisters, what has God told you? Leave what he has told you and focus on him, the one who spoke. I'm reintroducing to you today a God who is dependable. I'm reintroducing to you today a God who had parted the sea. This Bible is a chronicle of his ability, a chronicle of his integrity so that you will believe him. Away with all those talk. We have mocked God. We have cursed God because of our challenges. I know there are challenges. I never said there would not be. That's why I read you Hebrews 11. But I want to see your reaction. Show me your reaction under fire. And I show you whether you know God or not. Show me your reaction when things are not happening. And I can tell you whether you know God. Though he slay me. Will I be honest if I say I do not know him? I know him. I know him. He is dependable. If I die today without a miracle, I still know him. That's what made the people in Hebrews 11. They knew him so much, they rejected deliverance. Listen, listen. Imagine, for instance, that God gives you two options in life. Just imagine. And God says, you will go through a season with me for six years and you will become so mighty. Or you will go through a season for one year. You will start moving fast, but you will not become as mighty as six years. Let me tell you what many of us will choose. A bed in hand is what 20 in the bush. Oh God, thank you for giving me this one year. I can, I can pay the price. But there are those who know God. And say lord even if it's 10 years let's go because one step in faith will give you 20 years worth of miracle one step in faith one step in faith have you not seen how god wiped the tears of people and changed the lives of people overnight men who trusted god koinonia i'm introducing to you a god you need to know before you start claiming to believe his word you must have an encounter with this god you must create the atmosphere for his word to be real in your life let it not just be talk 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 cheap talk talk no sir anything god cannot give me no man would claim to say he can give me anything god cannot give me that's why i can look at any man and say thank you for your open door but go with it god did not open that door and i will not go back to sleep and regret i believe god brothers and sisters look at me 
I have gone through mountains and valleys in my life. Make no mistakes about it. Don't you think I'm just talking to you from a standpoint of comfort? I have gone through things that very few people can go through and survive. I know that God is mighty. By and large in life, everything you trust will fail you. And a time will come, you will no longer hold on to things but a person. Pastors have called me, man of God, I've listened to your messages, but nothing is working in my ministry. And the first question I ask them is, are you sure you are called? And they say, yes. I said, if you believe you are called, did you hear what God told you? They say, yes. I say, stay there. Stay at the last instruction he gave you and die there. There's a song that says, I will be a good soldier. He says, I will die at my post. If he does not shift a post, let me die there. I will survive the mockery. I will survive the ridicule. I don't have to be under pressure to explain things to people. No, it's not like this. Actually, it's, it's, it's God that told me. No. You will never believe him until you encounter him. You will never believe him until you encounter him. You will never believe him until you encounter him. Koinonia, please hear me. Faith, the foundation of faith is an encounter with God. An experience that furnishes the reality of him. There are real mountains you will face. You will face all kinds of mountains. Even the most trusted people in your life cannot take his place. A time will come you will have to stand alone and say, Lord Jesus, I trust you. I trust you. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Though we are few. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Singing forever. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Say. Say faithful is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord. I want you to fall in love with your Bible tonight. Listen, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen to me. I know you have books in your library. Listen to me, please. I know you have books in your library. I know you have DVDs. I know you have CDs. But I bring you to a point tonight where you eat this word till something leaves it and enters your spirit. I have in my phone a compendium of the words of Jesus. Only the words of Jesus spoken. Only everything Jesus ever said in the Bible. Only it. I listen to it every time I love the words of Jesus I listen to it sometimes I let it run for hours as I sleep and I have encounters I wake up under certain intense dimensions I know something happened I don't need to know what happened I know something happened are we together I know that something happened to me and encounter I'm a very busy person just returned from a trip today tomorrow we're off for another one you know Eddie was driving me we're coming from the bank and he asked me a question he said apostle do you ever rest I may live a busy life but not too busy for this this is the most accurate picture compendium of the dealings of God with men 
I don't read I read my Bible emotionally I don't read my Bible intellectually when I look at it I see myself if it be thou bid me come I I I replace Peter and I stand there I look at all the challenges that are before me there's a peace in my heart in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this peace that I know only comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light in my soul only comes alive every time I hear your voice listen brothers and sisters I want you to hear me if you do not come to a point of restful confidence through the word you will shake like a leaf at life at a point in time you will feel like dying that's what makes people commit suicide they get to a point in their lives where they move left there is no way out they move right they are pressed to the core and they think the only way is to drink to smoke or get a gun and blow themselves this word can minister the life of God to you this is ordinary scripture but the moment you begin to read it believing that out of it will come the word of God I assure you you will see miracles in your life and ministry sister I'm prophesying to you it's not over I don't know who said it's over but you take this Bible and recreate your future you have been predicting it by wishful thinking now create it through the power of the word you have been predicting it just by hoping hope is important it make it not a shame but let me tell you the truth if you must walk in any reality in your life you are going to have to create it i believe the word of god i know whom i have believed i have not followed cunningly devised fables i believe him it's time for every word that proceeds from your mouth to be a communication of faith don't speak until you believe we having the same spirit of faith it's called the operation of faith we having the same spirit operation of faith as it is written i have believed and so i spoke i did not speak to believe i spoke because i have believed you don't speak to believe you have an encounter to believe then you speak because you have believed this is bible faith time will fill me of jephthah and barak men who through faith koinonia please listen they built houses by faith some of us have come where god has brought us today it is by grace through faith by grace through faith by grace but through faith it is not just by grace through wishing by grace through crossing your legs and hoping that because it's by grace it will happen you will never see any result there are two prayer points we're going to pray now and we're done for this night next week I don't want you to miss it I'm going to be teaching you the dynamics of faith how faith really works we're going to look at this thing in depth how do I translate desires to manifestations? Rise up on your feet. We will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on high. We will rise in your name. Adonai. Let your first prayer point tonight be a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for showing me what I've been missing. Lift your voice and pray. 
Lord, thank you for showing me tonight that faith is not just wishful thinking. Faith is not just mental asset. Faith is not just memory of scripture. Although that is important. Faith is not just Bible study for a historical advantage. Lord, I thank you. Shabrata rato so brekete. Ela kaparata kato so do brekete balara 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 bal. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I like you to cry and say, Father, an addiction for Scripture plant it in me. Listen, listen. There are some of us here as I'm speaking for one month for two months you have not you have not opened this bible you have opened it in koinonia listen but to settle down some of us used to be really serious with studying the bible you just give god 15 minutes just rush it no 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 listen the goal is not to read the bible every day the goal is to be consistent life will not afford you there are very few people except those who use devotionals there are very few people that can really afford to read the bible every day five o'clock to six it's a worthy habit but not everybody will have that are we together there are many leaders who don't study the bible i'm a leader i know how hard it is to work with those routines i'm a leader i'm a man of god many men of god will lie to you it's not every morning that i get up i read my bible no that would be a big lie Many people will lie to you. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. 5.30, we're out of this town to catch up with the flight. There may not be time. I may barely even have the time to sleep. I may just get up and rush and take my bath. But one thing I can tell you, when the Bible says, when you see the Bible put an emphasis, the key is consistency. The key is not religion. You can develop a habit that will make you consistent like a devotional like creating a time morning in the afternoon or in the evening or any of them but brothers and sisters if you want to grow in faith you are going to have to embrace your bible and give god time so i like you to pray and say lord grace to give you time in my life lift your voice grace to give you time grace to give you time Grace to give you time not to rush around my life. That I will seek you with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will leave my hands to you and worship. I will worship with all my heart. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will leave my voice to you and worship. I will worship. Lord, I give you time. This is my busy life. Do something upon my life. Let me be a student of the Bible. Let me give time, knowing that my faith. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Not a godfather, not a godmother. All I need is you, Lord. The fountain of favor, the fountain of wisdom. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. 
Canada. All I need is you. talk about this but we are going to pray it all the same listen to me we are praying we are rounding up you cannot obey God until you know his will are you hearing me I will shift that to next week discerning the will of God but for now let me just tell you something there are two dimensions to the will of God there is his written will and there is his revealed will his written will is that which he has allowed to be written in scripture a communication of his desire it is it is not matured in the spirit to ask whether God wants you rich or God wants you alive there are scriptures that already show you it is his will Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future so asking oh God do you want a good life for me it's not a wise prayer but there are certain dimensions of his will that must be revealed next week I'm going to teach you how to access the revealed will of God it is not written here that Femi should be based in Zaria it is not written that Sam should be in London. Are we together? It is not written here that a Jimmy should marry Hope. It is not written here that Eddie should be a protocol in Koinonia. But you will need, let me tell you something. One of the areas where people have marked time in their life, they want to obey, but the will, the will, the will I have studied this and I'm still studying it the ability to access the revealed will of God because if you act in disobedience it is still unbelief you have acted your action must be based on a knowledge of the will of God we're going to take off from there so I'd like you to pray one prayer with all your heart and say Lord everywhere I'm still in confusion as to your will for my life accurate clarity reveal to me lift your voice and pray Koinonia pray every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area threatening my confidence every gray area reveal your will reveal your will reveal your will reveal your will 
make it clear. Make it clear. Make it clear. So that I will run without confusion. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Every time you turn in the day of battle, it is because you are in doubt of God's presence and God's will. Are we together? The moment you are certain, if someone comes to there and says, Joshua Selman, koinonia is not the will of God. I'm not even going to pray about it, my God. There is a depth of certainty. Do you have that kind of certainty for your life? If no, stop running. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you by this message tonight, you should mark time a while. This rush is too fast. There are some of us by this teaching, just peg yourself and say the month of October is the month of discernment, the month of clarification, and the month of certainty. Tell yourself, I'm not crossing October with these myriads of doubts in my life. I am tired of believing God today. It's like, this is my husband, but next week I'm in doubt again. It's like, this is my wife, but next week I'm in doubt. It's like God wants me to do this business, but I'm in doubt. It's like I, I, it's like I had, it's like I had, I had Katsina. I was even excited. But now I've come back, Katsina, we're back to sender. It's like, uh -uh, uh -uh. your faith will not be grounded that way. Open my ears to hear you. And Lord, any confirmation it takes to make me know it is you, give it to me. Lift your voice and pray. These are simple but powerful prayer points. Any confirmation about your will. Absolute clarity. Absolute clarity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I remember years ago, there are many people I see today who I remember when you would ask them when they were students, what will you do, be doing with your life? They say, serving God to the ends of the earth. They thought they were clear right now. Ask them, what are you doing with your life? Say, oh boy, Kai. He said, I thought I had. He said, I didn't leave all that one. We were children. That's why now that we're adults, let's face the reality. Let me tell you, when a man's life is like that, please hear me. Between now and next Friday, you should be able, am I going to be a man of God? Am I going to be a businessman? Am I a civil servant? Are we together? This issue of allowing life to choose for you will shred your life into pieces. Are we together? The last prayer point. Lord, what do you want for my life? What do you... I'm tired of making stupid choices outside your will. What do you want? I'm not so rebellious. What do you want for my life? Lift your voice and pray. Don't say I'm a businessman. What does he want for your life? Don't say I must stay in Lagos. I've already promised myself. I must be based in London. I must be based in France. What is his will for your life? I will never be a pastor's wife. God forbid. No, no, don't pray like that. Lord, what is your will? I will go.
listen inside and outside there are men you cannot have faith in a god you do not have a relationship with you can receive from a herbalist you don't have a relationship with you can relate with the devil and not even need to know him but when you come to god you must have a relationship with him there are people here under the sound of my voice and thousands following online who are saying man of god i need jesus in my life this may be the first decision you are making you've been going to church you've been hearing preachers you may even be a worker in the house of god but you are saying as you are speaking now i really am discovering that jesus is a stranger to me i do not know him i cannot boast of saying i have a relationship with him or there are people here saying man of god truly i gave my life to christ but the truth is i've lost touch with anything god for a very long time and tonight i hear your voice man of god invite me i'm going to make an altar call our time is gone just two minutes for this these two categories of people some of you may be seated outside as you are looking at the screen the holy spirit is telling you it's time for me to use you i can lift you it's time for us to rise where you are is not your best don't stay where your father stayed don't stay where your mother stayed but the first step is to make this declaration please wherever you are don't wait until someone starts moving i want you to make your way and rush out here right now and say man of god i'm not ashamed of jesus i'm not embarrassed i am coming before him god bless you god is touching people already God is touching people already. God bless you. No matter where you are, keep coming. This is not all. Young, old, there are people outside. What are you waiting for? Win that war tonight. Respond to him and say, Lord, I come to you. I need you. I need you. the holy spirit is still telling me there are a few people at least four people i know our time is gone but the holy spirit is telling me there are still at least four people outside inside there are still people if the holy ghost is speaking to you and saying you are the one the man of god is talking to don't be afraid make your way to the front you know you need jesus you know you need jesus Please do not be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed by who is standing or who brought you. Make that quality decision. I'm about to begin to pray with them right now. Make sure you join us. Don't come afterwards. Stand before him and say, Lord, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed to declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand, brothers and sisters. You have come sincerely to God some of you for the first time some of you are saying i'm tired of living my life i act as if things are all right but i know things are not all right don't be ashamed before him it's like an award is being given to you you have heard the word of the lord it's time to win that war you are not growing younger don't let your children look at you one day and say daddy mommy why are we like this you had an opportunity to serve god what is the difference between you and uncle so 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 they are serving god he said teach us to number our days you don't waste your time you are growing older every day you must invest your time serving the purposes of the kingdom say after me lord jesus you are not reciting a poem say it clearly lord jesus i love you i truly believe in you this night i came here to hand over my life completely to you i declare that from today take over my life be my savior be my lord i receive your life i receive your word into my spirit and i declare from today i am a new creation all things are past and the new has come the grace to walk in righteousness to walk in liberty i receive in the name of jesus from today my life becomes victorious in jesus name i stretch my hands to you and i pray i break the power of sin 
I declare that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus and by the power that is vested in the name of the Christ I release you from every guilt every shame every condemnation I pray from today that you will begin to rise higher and higher in the name of Jesus the power of the flesh the power of sin is broken over your life the grace of God is at work in you in the name of Jesus Christ amen and big congratulations for this decision now I'd like you to follow um, there's someone waving there's a gentleman waving his hands please follow him they're going to give you more information and I want to hold on please I want to encourage all of you sorry just a minute the Bible says they that be planted in the house of God not they that visit the house of God it's important that you are planted in the house of God and I would recommend for you at least for the next one month please be part of the prayer department Tuesdays four o'clock at Rema so that you can build your faith and build your spirit God bless you and I love you thank you let's appreciate them hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.